2021 Toyota Sienna Hybrid Van. Uh, the air conditioning on this one, what can we notate about it? What do you see right away? So of course it's a van, you'll have two evaporators. And as you can see, you can see the double piping Y branching off of the low side section, off of the high side, and you got the Y right there. So that means this is going to the rear air conditioning and this is going to the rear air conditioning evaporator. And these are going to the front. As you can see, the expansion valve is located right behind that plate right there. Here's your internal heat exchanger where you have the liquid line traveling inside and around the suction line to exchange heat for your subcooling. Now, of course, since this is a van, it's a large vehicle, it's a hybrid, it needs lots of cooling. What do you think will be the first thing you should notice and I jumped to right away because I wanted to know if they did a little bit extra on this vehicle, uh, condenser wise. So for this size condenser, it's not quite as big as they could have made it. They could have made it come all the way up here and could have tossed it out a little left and right and made their lines go around, but they didn't. They choose to keep it a few inches narrower and squatter. Um, so it's not as wide as it could have been. It's not as tall as it could have been. We have a large vehicle, a lot of glass space. So that means a lot of solar gain through all the windows. It has a sunroof on it, dark interior with dark vehicle. That's a lot of heat. You got to get rid of that. So you better have a really good AC system. So what they did on their condenser, if you know Denso condensers and all the vehicles that they're on, <clears throat> you get to see things right away. The first thing I noticed, I came over here to look at the side and what I was looking for, let's see if get this piece of shit Apple 13i Pro Max to focus because it's not that great. Look at how wide this condenser is. This condenser is a thick, deep, dense condenser. The width, the depth of this condenser, these fins that you see going across here, the tube, not the fins, the tubes, the refrigerant tubes, they're really, really narrow, but they're really deep. They wanna get rid and they wanna dissipate a lot of heat. So they didn't use your standard size uh, thinner Denso uh, condenser that you see on most <coughs> passenger vehicles. And so this is one hell of a, for the size, it's, it can dissipate a lot of heat, reject a lot of heat. So this would be, and it's small, it's relatively uh, narrow and the width and the height are relatively small for the size of the vehicle, but they made up one of that by the depth. So this would be a, one of the condensers that I would choose if I lived in a very, very hot climate and I had an automobile, you know, a small passenger vehicle, a subcompact, a compact, a regular size sedan, and it suffered from poor cooling due to the limited condenser volume. If I could get this condenser to fit in place of some other OEM manufacturer's standard condenser, I would use this van condenser in hot climates. Say you lived in Dubai, or say you lived in, um, you know, Arizona, you lived in somewhere where it's super, super hot, and you knew how to make your own fittings, bend your own lines, braze on your own fitting ends. I would use this condenser or one like it in place of a regular passenger vehicle condenser for you guys who live in extreme temperatures where the road surface temperatures in the summer hover a foot or two off the ground are 120 degrees all summer long. You know, Arizona, Nevada, some parts, some parts of Texas in the heat um, wave. That would be the condenser that I would stick on my personal vehicle. Okay, that's it. We'll see uh, more about this guy. And it's taking a long time. It's cold. 41 degrees outside and uh, it's not in drivable. I can't run it and heat it up and I have two AC systems. And so it's taking a little longer to remove the refrigerant out of it. Look at all that grounding. Grounding, 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 grounding. When you guys have intermittent problems with cars after they've been in a body shop and you discover it's drivability problems, um, go search for all the grounding lugs on the vehicle remove them and see that they scraped away and they made really good contact. Like often after they come from body shops, they paint right over all the holes and the threads and they fill them up with paint. And so you're putting grounding over paint 
and they're only biting through at a few little tiny places and then after a couple years they corrode in those little tiny contact points because of the high current trying to go through small metal contact points because the paint is in the way and they start dropping the voltage on all the ground points always see this problem after they've been in the body shop and you see a car like four years five years later start having a whole bunch of electrical problems all right guys catch you later